and we are good to go good morning good afternoon good evening and welcome to bwtn sports well you just saw the press conference for wilder versus the third two very very heated stuff and with us we have a very very special guest from haiti uh, via the states we have melissa sinville melissa how you doing Right, <laughs> Melissa, how are we doing? I am doing amazing. Right, first and foremost, we need to we did we need to address something because when I picked up the phone originally to call you, or you when I called you, I heard a voice down the line, and I didn't know if I was being pranked or not because I have been pranked before. Those who have been uh, <laughs> those who have been uh, on my channel. who may think we're having technical difficulties or think that we're not quite um something's wrong with our sound it's not our sound this actually is melissa's voice so um yeah it's yes. nice <laughs> so um yes. go ahead melissa mm -hmm. go ahead melissa Okay, so to those people who want to know who Melissa Sinville is, Melissa, let the world know who you are. You're a decorated champion. Is that is would that be correct to say that you are a decorated champion? Yes, I am. So and I'm gonna get more decorated. <laughs> so you're gonna be decorated almost like a Christmas tree with the amount of belts that you've got. Yes. So talk to us about let's... Go ahead. I have four belts. Yeah, I got four four belts right now. You got four belts at the moment. Okay. So so let's talk about what division you fight in. Um, lightweight, I'm fighting at 130, and I can fight 130, 135, and then 140 if those coins is right. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll move between 130 and 140. So when you fight between 130 and 140, what do you what do what does Melissa have to do to get from 130 to 140? Okay, so let's talk about the, the the fighters or the female fighters around you, people that may would know of fighters or other female fighters apart from yourself that would be in your weight division or around you. Who's in my weight? Um, who can I say? I can say Katie Taylor, Michaela. Um, those are the only two that I that stand out right now that I just know that's in my weight class. Okay, so. First and foremost, pick. Wait, wait, wait. And, and the, the Sydney Serrano. I know Amanda Serrano. Okay. I know they, they are my quick class. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Serrano sisters. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So talk to me about, first of all, uh, Katie Taylor. She won the title the other day. So let's talk about her win um, over the weekend. Did you get to see that? Okay, well, she just won the. She just. I, I, I saw pictures, but I didn't see the fight. I just saw pictures. 
Okay, so she's a world champion. Is it is that a fight that you would welcome? Sure. I think it'll be good for Ms. Boxing. I think it'll be a good fight because I actually could fight, so <laughs> she's not gonna be pushing me around the ring. <laughs> oh, okay. So um it, you know, in terms of you and your fighting career, what got you into boxing in the first place? First, so talk to us what you did as an amateur. So, talk to us because you're from Haiti originally. Did you? So, was it in Haiti you were boxing, or or, or did that happen in in the states? And so I, it happened in the states. At that time, they didn't have no boxing in Haiti. At that time. Okay. So. So I started boxing in the states. Then I went to Haiti. Yeah. Then I went to Haiti. Then I went to the US. Then I went to the US. Okay. Okay. You fought in the Golden Gloves, of course, and you got to the quarterfinals. Um, what was what was the point where you said, you know what? I'm fed up of the amateur game. I know you said you were disappointed, but what was it that triggered you to say, you know what, I'm going to turn pro? When was the day? Just, it was, I was just so frustrated because I gave the girl three standing eight counts and I dropped her and they still gave her the win. So that broke my heart because I trained so hard. I was so hurt. And I mean, I didn't even have nobody in my corner at that time to, you know, just say, Melissa, just, you know, let's just go back to the drum board. Let's give the, uh, the Golden Gloves another chance. You know, but I didn't have nobody to tell me that. So I just went off emotion. If I can go back to that time, I would do the Golden Gloves again. But at that time, I was so emotional and everything. That's why I was like, forget this amateur stuff. I'm turning pro. And then I just... I just left it like that. Just so, so how much of an influence were got the people that the, the Haitians that you knew, like Stavern maybe and 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 um, Berto, those guys that were around them. How much were they influential to you turning pro, or you know, in terms of making a decision as to who you should train with? about when you met those particular fighters so you've met Stavern what was it like when you met Bermain for the first time Big brother. 
Okay, that's interesting to know. Um, Berto. Okay. Uh, Pascal. I did it. I didn't meet Pascal yet, but I like what he's doing in boxing. Okay. And uh, everyone's favorite Haitian at the moment, Adonis Stevenson. I did it. I never met Adonis Stevenson, but I like what he's doing in boxing. I like that he's represented. You like what he's doing in boxing. Do you like the fact that possibly... Um, he has been WBC champion for so long and had such a high in his career, but yet, you know, the, the, the key fight, the fight against him against Kovalev or the fight against Ward for one reason or another hasn't happened. For yourself, if that had happened in your career, how would that make you feel? That would make me feel like I'd be on cloud nine. <laughs> what that that you couldn't get oh, that, that you didn't that you couldn't get those key fights you would be on cloud nine because you didn't fight the big fighters oh, oh, I thought you said if I oh no oh if I couldn't oh I thought you said if I could no oh if I couldn't yeah oh, I'll feel like like I haven't accomplished nothing then. see you gotta, you, you gotta fight the top. so because some people are quite happy just being comfortable being champion and there are other people that want to go out and fight the best your career i mean obviously you're a decorated champion but what what's your mindset oh my mindset <clears throat> when i started my pro career it was backwards for me you know usually when they have a fighter and they build their records so they give them a whole bunch of bums to fight and build their records no it wasn't like that with me i fought everybody i fought all the tough girls but now half of these girls that have that's having these knockouts wouldn't even <clears throat> go through half a round with them. So I'm 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 a true fighter. All my um fights in the beginning were tough. From Katie uh Katie Wilson, um Sarah Coon, um that's a Canadian girl. Uh she's really good. I forgot her name. Uh they call it a nightmare. Um, I fought a lot of tough girls early. Came in as their pony. So that just showed me that I'm a real fighter. What? I'm not one of those girls who push around the ring. One of the ladies that we have uh, and good friend to the show, Jelena Majinovic. Do you know her? Yes. Yes, I heard of her. Yes. yes. She's a, another, she was the first female WBC champion. So she'd been around longer. <laughs> Yeah, she was the first WBC, the first woman to win the green belt. Oh, yes. Didn't she fight Melissa Hernandez? I believe so. Okay. I, be I think I, yes, I think I've seen her fight. Yes. No, she's good. So there you go. There you go. So um, let's talk. Another thing, let's talk about uh, PEDs in boxing. I know that it's really stringent in men's boxing now that they're trying to weed out people who are on drugs or any sort of performance enhancement drugs um in women's boxing is that prevalent or have you had ever had to uh, have a fight counter because a woman's been on some sort of drug of some sort or substance mm, nope i never i never fought anybody that was on steroids but i'm sure there's some females out there that's that are on it, but I never fought any. Well, I don't know if I <laughs> they were on it, but I never encountered anybody or heard of anybody taking it that I fought. Was there anybody in the box that you felt, holding this woman is extremely strong, or a lot stronger than she should be? Um, I gotta say, my friend Melinda Cooper, she is the first and only girl to have buckled me with a body shot and sparring. Um, she's not on no steroids, but she's just naturally strong. And she fights at 122. The hardest punching girl I ever stepped in the ring with. Wow. <laughs> it's Melinda, Melinda Cooper from Vegas. She's the first and only girl that buckled me with a body shot in sparring with 12 ounces. No, 16. <laughs> wow. Now, uh, talk to me about your trainer. Because he has patience with me. Because I had, you know, throughout my years, I had a lot of bad habits. 
have it. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of these trainers that have it in the past, they didn't take the time to, you know, teach me the basics, the fundamentals that I need in the ring because they just thought I was a strong girl. Yes, I'm very strong, you know, but I needed to learn the basics, you know, because you can't just go in the ring and just bomb rush a girl like a crazy bull. You need technique. You need skill. So... Throughout the years, I had developed a lot of bad habits. So when I got with my trainer, he, you know, he just fixed me up. He, we had to go back to the basics, you know, back to the jab, back to moving your head, back to sitting down on your punches and stuff like that. So just being patient and, and helping me, or, you know, kind of start over again really helped me. So I'm happy with the trainer that I have right now because... Even though I raise blood pressure a lot, <laughs> but he takes the time out to help me. Okay, so who's what's your trainer's name? Leon Taylor, aka the Cat. He fought back in the day. Um, he had a fight. I don't know, if you know, alcohol. He fought alcohol yes, twice, light heavyweight, like uh, alcohol or cruiserweight. Alcohol. Yes. Yes, I know. He fought Glenn yes. McCrory. My good friend Glenn McCrory fought for the cruiserweight title. Yes. Taylor. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. And so how long have you had this relationship with your coach? Years. Years. And I had a few, been for years now. So what is it? I know you talk about your love for your coach. You hear about a lot of fighters changing from one coach to the other when they lose a fight. What is it that's kept you with your coach? You know, um, we just have a, we have a bond, we have a connection, you know, even after, even when I'm done boxing, he's still going to be in my life, okay. you know, um, he just, he's just a true person. One of the things we were talking about, um, or one of the things I noticed when I was doing some research about you, the name Mayweather came up and, um, I, you know, it was quite I was shocked at some of the things I was reading. I mean, you can go into it as much as you want to or avoid it if you want to, but it is something that, or something that's been a part of your life. My question to you is, how were you able to overcome those situations to be who you are today? Um, I just, <laughs> oof, that was, you know, nobody can knock me down. Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. And that situation right there, I wasn't going to let it stop me from boxing, you know, um, just getting to the top. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, came from a violent household, mm-hmm. you know, and coming up in a violent household and going through that situation, it just made me a stronger person, you know. Um, I'm not going to put up with it, you know, so it just... Coming from that and dealing with that situation. Mm-hmm. So, h- how was how was Mayweather connected? Is that family? Is that friends? Oh, pardon. Hold on. Hello. 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 Hi. It's what. Hi, I'm here. It's yes. WhatsApp. So, um, so how are you connect? How are you connected to Mayweather? How did that? Was that a family thing? Was that a friend thing? Was it like a trainer? How did it all? How are you connected? No, I, I, no, I, my friend at the time, Cornelius Locke, he was training with them. Ah. Uh-huh. See, now, the only reason really I brought that up is more of a case of a, an educational point or inspirational point or more of a point where other women out there can can be inspired by your story. And can say to themselves, no, I'm not putting up with this. I am going to I'm going to do better for myself. I'm going to go on.
be able to defend yourself and get out of that situation you know yeah absolutely i i hear you um did you at any time because it because it was somebody who was world famous did you feel at any time that 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 situation would would you would not be um be able to get out of the situation because of the name that person had and, and you know let me tell you my life don't have a price on it okay okay i am a human being i am somebody's daughter i am somebody's sister i am somebody's auntie you know what was done to me at on 2009 was that right and i was going to court. i don't care if it was mayweather at the end of the day you human just like me you know was wrong is wrong, was right is right, and what he did was wrong. So I was gonna, so I was gonna cry. I didn't care. I don't care if it was a man, but you know, everybody, a lot of people, you know, I found out who my friends were too. A lot of people were like, oh, they big brothers and this and this and that. I'm like, look, only person I feel is God, and that's it. And I just went, I, I'm saying, I'm going all the way with my case, and that's it. I'm a woman. You know, no, no man should put his hands on a woman. You gotta respect a woman. You know. So for the, so for people who who um who are listening in and might not know what we we're, we're talking about, I, you know, it's up to you if you want to go into detail about it. But if you could just skim through and just give people like an overview as to what kind of what the incidents were about, then people can have an idea. So we can not harp on about this, but move on from it. I mean, uh, I can't really like go too deep. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. I don't. Yeah, exactly. That's not the point of our call at all. So it's just. Because people would ask, well, you didn't talk about it, so, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just Roger Mayweather has, and the, the world knows already. Yes, you of know, course he it has is. a history of beating up women, you know. This is what he was doing, you know, his whole life was beating up women. He, have no, he has no respect for women and nothing like that. So they, he feels like, oh, because he's a Mayweather, he's a big boxing champ. Well, he was when he was the black mamba. He feel like it's okay to go disrespect women. No, it's not okay. It's not, you know. And he would, you know, he got away with it because he would pay them off. But now you put your hands on the wrong one because I'm not gonna put up with it. Because you're not gonna disrespect me no kind of way. So, moving on now in your, I mean, it, I, I can't even say moving on because it's it's you and it's a personal experience to you. So moving on may not be the best choice of words, but how do you, you know, in 2017, how how does that, how do you move with that? Is that still something in your mind? Does that something that makes you stronger? Is that something that you, how do you, how do you deal with it now in 2017, Melissa? And no, I don't, you know, I don't think about it right now. I'm just thinking about, you know, just trying to be a role model for other young women that, um, that been in situations where they had to like, you know, <laughs> fight for their life or that came from an abusive household, I want to be that face for them to let them know that you didn't get past it, you know? You don't have to live in that dark moment, you know, use that moment to make you stronger, you know, be a survivor and just be a role model for other women that's gone through that, you know? This, I just want them to know that I was there and I understand and I got your back and we can get through this together. So I just want to be that face for women, you know, even though all of that went on, I became champion. <laughs> More, you know, I got, I'm got. i holding four belts, I'm still going, you know, and that's it, you know, I just want to be a positive role model. I'm not going to let, you know, nonsense like that stop me from, you know, doing what I want to do in life. But what was the, what was it, what was it within you, deep within you, that was able to, to not only overcome or not get consumed by it, but to be able to go on and still become a champion? Mm. I, I have a warrior spirit. You have to kill me. <laughs> okay? That's one thing about me. I'm, I had a goal. I said I want to be a, a champ one day. And I stuck to that. And I said I'm not going to let nothing stop me. Nothing or anybody stop me from pursuing my goals. So that that's what just kept me driving. That's what just kept me driving. You know, just keep pushing. Keep my mind on the prize. And keep grinding. Well, I have to say, Melissa, I'm absolutely proud of you. You're an inspiration and absolutely a role model to women um, around the world. Um, on the subject of kill, and I'm, I'm going to touch on this. Um, as you know, your your homeboy, Bermain, is fighting on Saturday night. 
Deontay Wilder has come out and said that, well, you know, he he's looking to you make a dead man basically of of Bermain. And Bermain said he's gonna, if he has to kill Deontay to become champion. In your mind, you've known Bermain for a long time. That's your homeboy. What's Bermain's deep feelings or true feelings about Deontay Wilder, and why is it he has such a bad such bad blood towards him? So when you when you're talking to Bermain and obviously talking about his fight, when was the last time you spoke to Bermain? Oh, I just seen him the other day at the upper workout at the Eastern. Yeah, I saw I saw you I saw you stand next to him. Oh yes, all and before and before that, uh, the last time I spoke to Bermain is um the first time I went to go to Haiti he um was there In terms of Deontay Wilder and what Deontay Wilder has been saying that he wants to basically talking about this is a few the press conference was basically a funeral a, a, a funeral without a coffin and he says he wants a body and he's never had a body before and he wants Bermain to be the first body what are your thoughts about Deontay's feelings towards um Bermain Wilder says he wants a dead man on his resume. That's what. I mean, I I heard it. We've got some some new people in the room, and one person called Ao asked the question: "Is are you the main diverse nutritionist? Can you please reintroduce who you are to our new listeners?" Hey everybody, I am Melissa Saint Bill, Hades' best female cheer. <laughs> yes, if you didn't get that, it's, it's Melissa Saint Bill. She is a multiple title holder. Um, and fights between 130 and 140 and she states at 140 if the money's right yes if the money's right so for 135 and 130 definitely <laughs> okay so we're, we're still talking um like i said going back into a conversation you said you hang out with the domain and stuff like that was there anything he said because i remember he said quite quite intimately to me a few a lot, last week he said to me that he found it very difficult to accept the defeat and it affected his personal life and it affected a lot of things around him. Uh, well, I mean, all the times that I hung up with Berman, he was, uh, we was always laughing. You know, he was, his spirits was always in a good place, you know. We know we are at the gym or we'll all go out, you know, me, Berman, Cornelius, Lafia, Savage, Torrance. Daniels, you know, all the fighters, we, well, we were always in good spirits, so Berman was always the one to make everybody laugh, you know, he was like, 
He's always standing telling jokes and stuff. So I always go and burn me the good spirit. Well, uh, the main also, uh, uh, somebody else has come in the room now called Guja, or Gu and, he, and he's one of our um, regular viewers and listeners. He says, Stavane said he'll walk away with a smile on his face if he kills Wilder, and then I think Wilder reacted with the dead man on his resume stuff. So Stavane said if he kills him in the ring, if Stavane said if he killed Wilder in the ring, then um, he would uh, he'd walk away with a smile on his face. And Wilder told him, said, well, you know, he wants a dead man on his resume. So, I mean, if this was if this fight was in the UK, I think both guys would have been sanctioned already because you you just can't get away saying stuff in the UK like that. No way. The British Boxing Water Control would have jumped on that straight away. Wow. And I mean, yeah, those are those are some good points. Like you said, you know, those are so harsh words. <laughs> I predicted. And I, I, I didn't, Yeah, I, just, I predicted, I've said to a lot of fight fans, I said, this fight could end up being like a Hagler and Hearns. Just, I don't mean by the skill levels, I mean just absolute brute force. Stavern flying out the corner of the first round and, and, and Wilder coming to meet him. Just com a complete collision. It's, it's going to be a fight. But I'm going with my man Berman. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going with Berman. Oh, of course, it, it would be wrong for you to go otherwise. Um... In your career, have you ever had any bad feelings like Bermain's got towards Wilder? Um, you know what? I, I did. Uh, well, her name was, yeah, Natasha Spence. She's probably the only girl that put me in a bad mood. She put me, she took me to a bad place, and I really had to take it to the streets on her. What? <laughs> what? Personal, do you did you enjoy the fight more or did you enjoy it less? I was in a whole nother I was my mindset was on war. I just wanted to just whoop her ass. And I did. You know, I just was numb. You know what I'm saying? I, I just I, I turned into somebody else. Uh when you finished whooping her, did you turn and have a smile on your face when you finished beating her up? Well, I was kind of referring to the whole Stavern thing. Oh, you know, I beat you. When I beat you up, I'm gonna smile. I'm gonna smile at you afterwards. It is. Um, do you think that Haitians or, or from from people from the island are more um, probably more explosive than those from America, or do you think it's just a it's just a character thing? Okay, Stavern, Pascal, Adonis, Berto, the last four already, and you five?
Well, it, you know, I think a fight, a fan fight, you would be a fan friendly fight between yourself and Katie Taylor. I can't, I can't stop talking about it enough because Katie Taylor has just won the world title. She's Irish. In fact, we're in Ireland at the moment. Um, and she's just won the world title in a very good fight. And, um, you mean, you, you, I mean, that'd be a great opportunity for you to come to Europe and showcase your skills. Would you, do you as you're a multiple and you've got multiple belts, would you feel that Katie would have to come to you or would you go and fight Katie in Ireland or in Europe? You know, it don't matter because in the beginning of my career, I had to go to all these girls backyard, you know? So she could come here, I can go over there and we could just give, you know, give the fans a good fight because it's going to be a good fight, you know? I know the girl can fight and I can fight too, so... So definitely going to be in women's history. <laughs> would you would you consider yourself the A side because you've got more belts or or or, or, or uh, you know if purple, people are going to try and sell it? Well, Katie Taylor was an Olympic champion. So how 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 would you view that in the negotiating table? Do you do you view it as well? I'm the I'm the pro that's got the multiple titles, uh, Olympic champion who's just won a world title. How would you how would you negotiate through that? And if you need to take it to the street, or take it to the street as well. Oh, hell yeah, you already know. <laughs> you already know. So, you know, I, ne I never um, I like to get girls' records to see who they knocked out or who they, you know, because no, they didn't fight for the same thing. So, I never get, you know, caught up in the, oh, they was in the Olympics, or they had these and um, I'm on the belt. Because, like, for example, look at what Clarissa Shields for, um, that her last fight when she fought that girl, she was undefeated. So, now you see how close she was riding and tied that girl all over the ring. Yep. I questioned myself. I said, who did, who did this girl? Who did this girl um fight? How did she get a WBC goal? And Clarissa just dragged that girl around the ring like it was no tomorrow. <laughs> see, records don't mean nothing. Records, Clarissa proved that point. records are for DJs. And she, and <laughs> okay well shout out to Clarissa Shields she is a bad 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 lady a bad lady wicked yeah so you know what were your thoughts on Anne Wolf's career She has been recognized for that big right hand that knocked that tall girl out. I mean, that, that's the punch that everyone talks about. Yes, that, that overhand right, yes, that knockout was beautiful. There, there, there are rumors that she beat men up the same way as well. <laughs> I've heard some stories. Haiti as well, is she? Yeah, well, you know what? She probably is. <laughs> <laughs> 
can claim her too as well then. <laughs> and I ain't arguing with her. So, all right. One of the other ladies I, I managed to speak to in my career, uh, just interviewing, I've spoken to uh, uh, Riker. I forget Riker. The girl's Riker. Lucia Riker. Oh, my God. It was an amazing interview I got with her. Um, you know, I've been chasing her for years to get an interview, and I finally got an interview with her. And what a fighter she was. Yes, I, I love her. I watch her. I can watch anything on her. I love Lucia Riker. And uh, just a word about the current undisputed champion, Cecilia Brackus. She just finished. She just fought. She just beat up another yeah, girl. She yeah. Up yeah, the girl that, yeah, yeah the girl that kissed her on the lip. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw it on Twitter. I saw, well, I saw the pictures. Um, I, heard, I never see her fight, but I heard of her. I heard the thing. Yeah, she's uh, still unbeaten. She's a uh, undisputed champion. It's a real shame, though, that the first female undisputed champion or women's undisputed champion isn't getting the profile that she deserves because you would have thought all the women that have got multiple weight multiple belts and particularly her who's an undisputed champion should get much more profile and she should be speaking out more what are your thoughts on that i think it's i think it's unfair because i think right now you know not taking nothing from the the ladies that won the olympics i feel like they're not giving recognition to the, the to the ladies that were there before the girls that that went to the olympics you know what i'm saying the Taylors and the michaelas they get it all the shine because they just went to the olympics but what about the women that were there before them you know what i'm saying yeah so that's why i feel like it's not fair you know that you know like you just said she's not getting no recognition you know she's not seeing an empty you know um it's just, it's just bullshit. It is. It is. <laughs> she's beautiful. She's beautiful. She is absolutely. She can fight and she's, and, absolutely. And she's, she's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, right. Now, uh, let's see. I'm going to go through. There's some people in the room that are talking. We've got Wilder fans. We've got Stavern fans in the room. Uh, so, Mr. Boxing Enthusiast says, Stavern means business. Um, another person says, Wilder's about to murder this fool. And then uh, Boxing Enthusiast says, Stavern ain't playing around. I'm going to put money on Stavern, winning by KO. Tube says, Stavern by KO. Boxing Enthusiast says, Wilder is shook. Uh, we talked about the dead man's resume uh, on his resume. Uh, let's see now. We talked about the smile. And they said, Dr. Dredd says, Wilder came in all cool while Stavern was all red eye. In fact, Stavern was about to attack Wilder's people. Were you at the, Did you get to see the presser? Let, 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 let me tell you, Saturday night, you know, everybody gonna get their answer. You know, Birmingham versus Wilder. Oh, Birmingham versus Wilder. 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 Birmingham Okay. All right. Um, do you have a message to Katie Taylor, um, Melissa? You know, I don't, you know, I'm not that type of one, that type of fighter to call, you know, other female fighters out, you know, I'm not really that trash talk, but I mean, Katie Taylor and, and the other girls in my weight class, you know, I mean, you guys want to get it on, we can do it. The coins better make sense though. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, thank you so much for talking to BW10 Sports. Before you go, how do people uh, follow you or see where you're at or over social media? Oh, yes, yes. You guys can follow me on Instagram at killer underscore metal and on Twitter um, at Melissa Singville and Facebook Melissa X Singville. And I'm always on there. I'm reading everything. So, have fun on social media. And thank you for having me. 
Melissa, Melissa, thank you so much. We look forward to talking to you again very soon and keep us updated with your next fight. Yes, you know, we're back, Melissa. We're looking for December, but that's all I can say. That's all I can say. But all I'll right. keep you posted. Just keep me, keep me posted. You, I will. Thank you. You take care, champ. Bye bye. So there you have it, Melissa Sintville, the um, world champion, the decorated world champion, multiple um, title champion, four world, four, four belts she's got at the moment, and uh, what a character indeed. Uh, potential fight with her against Katie Taylor in the future. Katie's just won the world title, and of course, Melissa is a decorated world champion. A good fight. They nicknamed her Little Tyson. Okay. So she was the first Haitian uh, female world champion, of course. Bermain Stavon was the first Haitian heavyweight champion of the world. So um, let's see what people are saying in the room. Yeah, this, that was her voice, by the way. It was her voice. Uh, ear drum alert. <laughs> Funny, you guys. Right. What we're going to try and do is either one of two things we're going to do tonight. We're either going to call Bashir in the room tonight or tomorrow night. But as soon as I can get a hold of Mr. Stavern, I don't know if he's still doing press conferences or not press presses to get Mr. Stavern in the room. And uh, it's quite funny that um, a lot of people, um, a lot of media, I don't know if you've seen the media interviews with Bermain with the other various media outlets around the world um that uh he's not talking to them which is quite funny quite hilarious one media out they actually came and said oh it's like pulling teeth speaking to you and i'm just laughing at myself well i don't know I, I, it's interesting and uh why Bermain doesn't want to talk to them i i still need to find out why he doesn't want to talk to them there must be something there that he just doesn't want to give interviews well maybe i don't know but um yeah it's a uh, lot of people to to i i said to you guys I did say to you guys from the beginning that this was going to be an explosive heavyweight press conference. I said it. I said it. Did I not call it to be explosive? Did I not say that, you know, it's going to be volatile? That press, that that way, they better have people there for the way. They better have security there because it could all explode at the way. And so they need to have that real tight. Don King, as always, was absolute class. Spot on. There ain't no promoter in the world that can touch Don King. Eddie Hearn is not in that man's class. Eddie Hearn's not in that man's league. There's playing promotions and there's being a promoter. And that man is a different class. I love Don King so much because he just tell you as it is. He'll smile in your face and he could be insulting you and he'll smile in your face and you wouldn't even know he's insulting you because everyone's laughing. Mauricio, there's no need for skewing. Yeah, sit down. Was it, was it down? Stay back, stay back. That's funny. That guy who made the comment about pulling teeth, what? Uh, that Matt, that guy who's done lots of comments about pulling teeth has done lots to sit down, long sit down in this Well, there you go. So, you know, it, it's quite apparent where, where the lines are drawn now. Stavern is talking maybe most of the time with BWTM Sports, and that's a relationship we've built over, what, two, three years? So. Uh, just check to Melissa uh, Google Images. Quite a uh, physique, physique Melissa's got on her. She wasn't lying about being strong. Oh, she's very strong. Very fit, very strong. Good looking lady. And uh, certainly not one I want to be getting upset. Unfortunately, what happened with her and uh, on, on Mayweather? Uh, Stavern was all shaky. People making a big statement about Stavern being shaky. You've got to remember, this is a guy that's had an amateur career, a pro career, fought uh, Wilder before. People keep forgetting that, that this is a guy that was – that's the way he is. I, I, people are talking like it's his first pro fight or his first world title fight or he's never fought on the big stage before. It's nothing to do with that. This was always going to happen. When you've got somebody in front of you that you've got such dislike for, somebody that you spent a whole year or year and a half chasing, I told you, I said this all to you. The man was vexed. And you know what? 
you could say two things. You could say, oh, well, you know what? I ask, I ask Wilder fans, if Stavern was dehydrated and it was true, and you're st all you Wilder fans are dismissing it, and you're very dismissive, if Stavern was dehydrated and he comes in fully fit and he's strong, does is Deontay Wilder able to take the punishment? That's the question. I mean, people think that Deontay Wilder is uh, invulnerable and he's Superman and he can't be hurt. This is a guy that got knocked down by Harold Sconius. They talk about, well, Stavern got knocked down by, um, in his last fight, by uh, Derek Grossi. But nobody ever talks about the Sconius fight. Or the, what's it? Dar was it Daryl Johnson? Or was the guy? Dustin. 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 Somebody told me about the guy Dustin. So people, you know, man, you've met, man's had a year to just think about one thing, Deontay Wilder. Wilder in the last year has had thought about, you look at the fights, Parker, Dillian White, Luis Ortiz, um, Tony Bellew, um, Anthony Joshua. He's had his mind all over the place. Stavern's had his eye on one thing. And this is going to be a fight, ladies and gentlemen, a proper fight. Why is Wilder? I, I told you Stavern was angry. I told you Stavern. It's not about, it's not about just a belt. It's not about just about, I told you guys, but you're, nobody, listen, nobody listens to when England speaks. Nobody listens to when I talk. So I done, I've done finished talking to you, baby, because I tell you and you don't listen. So it's all right. But, I, but all you people are like, like to repeat, but you don't, a lot of people like to repeat what other people say, but don't think about it. Well, okay, he's had a year and a bit out of the ring. Okay, so he could have been inactive. But, but I also say to you guys that somebody who's rested and has thought about a strategy of how to beat somebody. Just one way to think about it. People think, oh, Stavern's going to be slow on his feet. You better hope Stavern's slow on his feet. You better slope Stavern's slow of hand. And you better hope the same Stavern turns up in the ring again. Because that's what all you guys are banking on. I don't hear any of you in there regarding Wilder thinking to yourselves, this is a completely different fight. This isn't a rematch that happened six months down the line. This is a rematch that's happened nearly two years down the line. Wilder's been injured since. Stavern's been injured since. Both men are older. So you all are sleeping on this fight. I told you it was going to be an explosive press conference. You didn't believe me. I'm telling you that what that Wayne's going to be off the chain. I'm telling you. And as for the fight, I'm looking to see a fight in that fight that only goes six rounds. It don't go past six rounds. But I'm telling you now. This fight could be fight of the year. If not fight, if you think that if you think the Klitschko Joshua fight was a big fight and explosive, this fight's gonna be more explosive. I'm telling you. And if if Stavern's able to get past that jab and get on the inside, like what I'm seeing at the moment, mm -mm. and he's all up and wild, you can't prepare for yourself for a war when you're in a war. You can only prepare for yourself for a war. I hope that Wilder and his team has not prepared for the first Stavern. Am I the only bloke in here for Wilder? No, there's quite a few Wilder fans in here. And there are quite a lot of Wilder fans that are in the dark, lurking around and waiting to see Stavern fall and then come and come come shouting to me about it. No? Well, you know, uh, Shane's uh, Wilder's team jumped in when Stavern was on fire on the mic. He was building good momentum there. Yeah, it was building nicely as well. Uh, the fight means everything to Stavern. I hope he pulls it off, man. But Wilder was looking very sharp in the media workout too. He took it very serious, same way. Yeah, well, you know, he looks sharp, but um, technique is technique. I hope that the same people today that are saying Wilder's one of the best heavyweights in the world, he's a dangerous man, he's this and that. I hope afterwards, should Stavern cause the upset, I don't want to hear no excuses about, well, Wilder was a bum, Wilder was no chin, Wilder weren't good. I don't hear any of that stuff. The same people in the room, I don't hear any of that crap afterwards. I don't hear none of that. You know, I, I'm saying that I hope both guys, both guys are good fighters as far as I'm concerned. No one's a bum. Stavern's going to come in a totally different way that people expect him to. Like I said, expect him to fight the way for the amateurs. But I think he's going to be faster. I think he's going to be more explosive. And, you know, Klitschko was coming off a two-year layoff and putting one of the best performances against AJ. Same situation with Bermain. That's what I'm saying. But the difference is, between Stavern and Klitschko, 
is that Stavern listened to Bashir. Klitschko didn't. People have totally, totally not even mentioned. I don't hear anyone talking about the impact that Bashir would have had on 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 on, uh, on uh, Stavern's career or training. Yeah, there's a very good possibility that both guys could demolish one another. I won't say anything like that, but I guarantee that if I wonder when you hear that stuff from all those who hate the, uh, I, I I won't say anything like that. But I guarantee that if Wilder wins, you will hear that stuff from those who hate Deontay. Many of them, not all. Yeah, I know, I know. I like Stavern to win the rematch. Wilder wins next rematch. Both of them get some career high paydays against AJ and drive into the sunset in the same Cadillac smoking cigars. Stavern's getting brutally laid out. He's not that good. Ayo, Ayo, wasn't you the same guy that said that Takam was going to get sparked in a round? I don't hear nothing from you, AM, because you said that Takam was going to get sparked in a round or two. That uh, um, they just say, "Oh, someone's going to get sparked," and then, and then, when they don't get sparked, you come in the room the next day, uh, unaccountable, and then you say, "Oh, yeah, he's going to get sparked." So I don't want to hear what you've got to say, to be honest, because you said the last time that tackle was getting brutally knocked out around. I told you it wasn't going to happen. So if Stavern gets past early rounds, and Wilder's in trouble. Wilder ain't that good. Stavern loses. Should he fight like in the amateurs? I believe he will fight like he was in the amateurs. I just want to know if if Wilder get, if, if Stavern gets past the jab and he's on Wilder's chest, what are you Wilder fans gonna say when the punches start flying? When the punches start flying, I'm telling you. If you look at all of Wilder's fights and all of his knockouts, every one of his knockouts has been big long left jab, big long left hand out, big right hand through the middle. What's my official pr prediction? Fight doesn't go past six rounds. And uh, Stavern proves to everybody that he was dehydrated the first fight. It wasn't a joke. He proves himself to be stronger, moves a lot sharper, sharpest of his career, and uh, vastly underrated. That's what I see. And now, uh, uh, hello. No, I did not, Ingram. You're confused with something else. Now, you said Takam was going to get blasted out there. Takam's a bum. I believe Stavon when he said he was sick in the very first fight because he threw too few punches, which is very odd. Stavon is one very scary dude when he gets angry, lol. Isn't it great that we're possibly going to get Stavon in the room with us later? That's good, isn't it? It's a good feeling, it. When you get him in the room, that'd be nice to hear what he's got to say when he's called off, of course. I promise you, I promise you. I promise you, I can't get the voice. I gotta say, I, I, I want to say something about Deontay Wilder, and this is this is this has got nothing to do with boxing skills or if I think he's gonna win. Or, nothing to do with that. I want to talk about Deontay Wilder, the man. I want to give him some credit in a moment. Deontay Wilder, for all the dumb and foolish things he does say, I will give him his props, real props here, and say that I think Deontay Wilder. Um, Talks a lot of sense. Deontay Wilder knows what's up. And I do believe Deontay Wilder when he says he's trying to chase that Joshua fight. I believe him. I don't know if I believe he actually wants the fight. But I do believe a lot of things he says. And I give him a lot of credit. I love the way the, sh the, the I love the, that was one of the funniest parts of the press conference. I was getting ramped. I was getting ramped when the glasses come off. I was getting ramped. I was really going. And then when he was going to confront, what I like what he said to I think he went to the Bella. I didn't stop you. I didn't tell you. To, I didn't stop you talking, did I? I let you have your peace. Let me have mine. Let me have mine. And then and then when Mauricio Sullivan jumped in, it was funny. Sullivan jumped in the. A uh, body double for security. That was so funny. <laughs> that was funny. I will ask him. I'm going to ask him. I'll ask him for you guys as well. Let me think what else. Any other questions? Think them locks hold him back. 
should hold me when chasing them girls. Uh, to learn, can I plot forward again? I don't want to see him. See him. That will not work. Yeah, I agree. It won't work. He's got to be. Bit, he's got to be more about the work. Definitely. Wireless posse showing up was so ridiculous. Bunch of little guys, big in their own mind. Yes, the was going after every one of them. That would have been a fight before the fight. He really don't like. Stav he don't really don't like one. Let me get my phone. You know, I think this fight, in terms of hatred, there's only a few fights in history I know that's got such bad, real bad blood towards them. Um, the first fight, Chris Eubank, Nigel Benn, bad blood there. Um, Frotch goes bad blood. Um, but I think that was more, I don't want to say manufactured, but um, what's another fight I think I would say is uh, bad blood? Um, Morales Barrera, bad blood there. Um, Hagler Hearns. Um, Shaib says, Ingram, love your channel. Been following you for ages. Just never had a YouTube account to connect with you. Yeah, why AJ? Thank you so much, my man. I appreciate you. Are you watching the Chisora fight as well this weekend? Um, I might do. We might commentate on both. We'll see how it goes. Um, so I've got Sky Sports. So I'll watch the whole thing tomorrow night or Saturday night. So yeah, they're all about killing one another. Beyond that, yeah, the British Boxing World Control would be on their case. Yeah, they would. Could you imagine that was in the UK? Could you imagine that was in the UK? <laughs> in fact, in some ways, I wish it was in the UK. I'd love to see how they'll how they'll sort it out. But the only thing about this fight that's a bit distasteful is that if any guy gets seriously injured in this fight. It won't be good. It won't be good. That's the only thing. I mean, you know, both guys are emotional. I don't know if the boxing commission are going to say anything about this because you can't have that man. Seriously. I mean, it might sound all like it might be hype for the show, but when does when does um yeah yeah if if that was Adam Smith, I'm sure his face he'd look like Mr. Bean. If Mr. Bean had seen a pair of breasts, that's what his face would look like, Adam Smith. We apologise for the language um, after the watershed. We apologise. Sky Sports apologise for the profuse language in, 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 in the corners. Uh, this mouth-watering contest between the champion Deontay Wilder and the challenger Bermain Stavern. Sit back, light a candle and relax. This one is going to be full of fireworks. I can't wait till Saturday night. Johnny. Yeah, well, you know, it's definitely 50-55. I mean, 50-50, 50-50. I mean, I can see why the guy that's never won a fight is going to win. And I can see why the guy that's won a fight will win. Um, yeah, I, I can see it's definitely 50-50. Definitely 50-50. So, you know. Uh, Ingram, have you ever really given your thoughts on Porter's great news? Uh, have you got Porter? I don't know yet. I'm not sure. I probably will do, but um, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked at anything else at the moment, so we'll see. Um, simple as that. I don't know. I don't know. But like I said, if Stavern were to become heavyweight champion of the world, I've got some question to ask him. I've got some question. I've got to ask him about Showtime. What? He's got beef with Showtime. He's got beef with the media. Bermain overrated. Oh, there we go. So what, what are you telling me that for? Like, like people make their comments. They come in a room, not good evening, not good afternoon, not good morning. Bermain overrated. Why are you telling me that for? What, what, what difference does it make if Bermain's rated, overrated? If he's rated 100 or he's not rated? If he's rated pound for pound the best in the world or pound for pound the worst heavyweight in the world? What difference does that make? I don't, I don't get, I don't understand some people. I don't understand the mentality of some people. In fact, do you know, it's like, I tell you what it's like. It's like, imagine yourself in a pub, yeah? And you've got your regular people sitting in the pub with you and your mates. You sit down in the pub, you have a conversation, right? This is how it works for me in the, in, in the social media world. And you've got your regulars that come in the room, then we're all talking, we're chatting, have a conversation. And then you've got this one person that just jumps in the room and just says, watch, watch this. They're just jumping around. You're having a conversation, yeah, about this or your dad. You're in real deep in the conversation. And you get some guy that randomly comes into the room and goes, he sucks. Excuse me? He's a bum. 
Okay. Eat shit. Okay. You're an idiot. Okay. You chat shit. Okay. And you're like, excuse me? Like, you know, can't put it together. Like, your sentence, I don't understand it. You love the main. Right. Okay. So, what? what, what and, and your point is bromance. Yes. And, and, your point, and, and, and your point is brother. What's your point, bro? Get your point. Get your point. Get your point. Uh, I don't think Stavone is rated that highly to begin with, so I'm not sure where Detroit T is coming from. Well, bro, listen, do me a favor, come up with a real name, and we'll talk about love and romance, because I have no love for anybody who can't come in with their real name. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not good. It's not a good start. You come in a room with a dodgy name, a shady name, and then you and then you say, rather by TKO. Okay, and? Okay, fine. Good for you. Detroit is a wild fanboy. Like, I don't know what these I don't know what these people expect me to do. I mean, what? what do you want me to commit suicide? Do you want me to shut my channel down? Do you want me to I, I don't get it? What do you think is Bermain's best performance? Is that performance uh, and is it that performance that makes you believe he can beat Wilder? This performance, this fight now is gonna be his best performance. Do you know I remember the night? Actually, I was watching it to actually, I didn't go to bed till eight o'clock this morning after I did everything. And I was sitting down watching Evander Holyfield against Bobby Chez. And he couldn't knock out Bobby Chez, right? He couldn't knock out Bobby Chez. Bobby Chez was throwing all bombs back at Evander Holyfield. And people said Bob, um, Evander Holyfield was shot. And I put, went and put money on the bookies for Holyfield to knock out Tyson. And he went out and he knocked out Tyson. Uh, Ingram, don't commit suicide or homicide. <laughs> no, I won't. I don't find it. It's not a laughing matter. I'm just saying. These people, I don't understand. Stavane's got more fans over here. Well, he might do. Uh, St Bermain's a hater. Okay. If you say so. All right. Okay. If you say so. If you say so. Um, that's your truth. And that's how you see it. Wilder is a big AJ hater. Okay. When will you do this event again? We're meant to be doing it tonight. We're meant to be doing it now or today. I don't know. He said to me to hold on. Let me just catch my back. Let me get my phone. Let me get the back phone and see where it's at. How much heard from yet? What time is it now? It's now nine o'clock, so it's what time is Tavern? I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah. Me, me, I'll find it for you guys now. Um, I've just sent a message. He can't accept the, that beat up while they're putting him. Look, let me educate a few people in this room. And so many people in this room have never boxed in their life, have never put a glove on, have never had to feel a full impact of a punch on the chin, the nose, or the body. And I'm going to give you an example of how people are, are sent don't make no sense oh here we go Just, I'm just speaking to the main bar me, bar me a second.
Yeah. The main sir. I just heard from him. So well, as soon as I, as soon as we, uh, get the, as soon as I get the, uh, the, the uh, confirmation, we'll get him live on the channel. So. Um, yeah. As I was saying. If you, for example, let's give an example. If you, it's a, I'll give you a good example. You, uh, you end up going out with a girl you've always wanted to go out with, and you get her, and then you have an argument with that girl, and you, you say some things, you do some things that you regret in the heat of the moment. You're angry, okay, and then you break up, but that was the girl that you loved the most, okay. And then two years down the line, you see her again and you get the opportunity to put it right. And you all you've been doing is thinking about that one girl. What do you do? Man, Detroit T, do me a favor. Do me a favor. You may not, but I'm not sticking to boxing. That's the problem with boxing people. They're too boxed in. So I'm going to continue my story. And if you don't like it, you know where you can go. So anyway, so you get the opportunity to put it right of a girl. What do you do? You want to put it right, so you don't put it right. Let me ask you something, Mister Detroit T. I don't. I can't even talk to you. Real. I can't be real with you because you're not real. You're not real. So what I'm basically saying is to real people, real understands real. Oh mate, listen. You know what? You don't make any sense. So bye. Ah, thank you. There, he's no longer trolling. What about man that don't do gal? Well, if man that don't, don't man that don't do gal, then that's that's them. Uh, same applies to them. Same applies to them. But I can't talk like that because I I do gal. Well, I do. I got my wife, so so that, that that's what goes with that, really. So um, my point is this. Yeah, there are a lot, you know. But the boxing community are the most boxing community I've ever come across. They're the most narrow-minded, most ignorant set of people you can meet, because and they don't make they're not logical people because they don't connect real world with boxing. But boxing is one of the most real world things you have to deal with. You have to deal with in life, going down in life, getting up in life, overcoming situations, doing things you don't really want to be doing, but you have to do it to get to the next level. I don't know. I'm married too, so I can't answer that question about other men with other men. I can't answer them questions. Sorry. Not in this reality or any other reality, but each to their own. Um, <clears throat> so I don't understand when people say stick to boxing. Boxing is just a part of life for me. Like, for example, you'd only understand this if you've boxed before or, you know, or any particular sport where, for example, boxing is brutal. When you get in the gym, there's some days you could be not feeling to do sparring you you you're but you're in an eight-week training camp and you're getting your body battered you know you, you've got your body sore your ribs are sore your muscles sore you can just about get out of your bed you've got to go and do a full bar run you don't want to do it you understand but this is all part and parcel of life for that person who is a bricklayer you know you want that money at the end of the month to buy your house or buy your car or get married or whatever it is you want to do but you have to put that hard work in boxing is no different so i don't understand what the people have what problem people have with people somebody if you know they're real idiots in boxing because if somebody didn't want to take revenge if muhammad ali had the process of some of these idiots across boxing right you would muhammad ali would never be great because he never go for revenge mike tyson should never have gone for revenge against evander holyfield lennox Lewis should never have fought evander holyfield again you know what I mean? Grow should never have fought Frotch for a second fight. Complete idiots. Do you know what I mean? It's complete idiots. Don't make no sense. So, you know, you just sometimes you listen to the line of thinking some people have in boxing. And they don't make no sense. Why is he angry? What what where's all the beef come from? Where's all the beef come from? Well, you know, if somebody takes something you feel belongs to you, you worked hard to get. And, uh, you know, of course you're going to have bad feelings towards that person. Respect and show love to every fighter, hard, hard sport. Mate, it's easy for you to say what you're saying. 
it's easy to say what you have it's so it's always say respect and all this crap it's not you who's in the situation but if you were in the situation and you were feeling that pain i'd like to see how you'd appreciate something to you respect see it's very easy to talk from a position of being detached from the situation whether Bermain Stavern wins or lose it don't make a difference to your life really it may have a, a bit more impact in your life if you've spent like a couple of grand on your house and you put a bet on it it might make a more impact to your life but by and large you can walk away from it let's make a comment and walk away um serious question to the honest brit talent here why do many people over here there hate wilder with a passion his personality i understand he talks smack which i don't like or b because he's Amer american's aj rival first of all you have to remember you have a casual market that don't have a understanding of the history of boxing so forget forget them then you've got people who hate because they don't like themselves that's a huge majority of the people in the world today so you that's a whole lot of people who scratched off right there and then there are people who are sheep on followers and just can't make a mind for themselves so they just hate because everyone else hating scratch them out so that's a lot of people i've dealt with uh wilder gets confused when when punches are thrown at him if stavern gets really steps on the pedal wilder will result for looking to the big shot with his right hand well listen you all seem to forget how who, how wilder got knocked out in the amateurs i think you all forget that and uh, everyone's always quick to talk about anthony josh how he got knocked down the amateurs look at how look at how Wilder got knocked down the amateurs. It wasn't a big six foot seven guy that knocked him over. It was a guy who was short and squat. Um, I'm from South London. I don't hate Wilder. Now, it's very difficult to hate someone you don't know. Pekka Decker, my man, how you doing? Uh, Ayo. And for the record, I don't hate Joshua at all. I don't hate Joshua. I think Wilder would have been a big star already if he was from the UK. I mean, in general, Ingram, people give boxers too much stick. Again, a lot of the people that give boxers stick have never boxed in their life. They've never taken a punch in anger. So, I mean, you have to, when, you, when you're talking to people in general, you have to really take into consideration the demographics or the people that are involved in this conversation. Against Washington, Wilder was crap. So if Bermain can hold Wilder's shot, there might be a new champ. There might be. Joshua is just a billboard for the elite to earn money from. Corruption is real at Matchroom and Team Joshua, starting at the 19, 2002 Olympics versus Savon. Ingram, are you a boxing Ingram? No, I used to box. Um, I used to train uh, at one point. Steve Robinson's Steve Robinson, the former WBO featherweight champion of the world. His trainer was my trainer. I had the same trainer as Ronnie Rush, um, as Barry Jones. And at one point I was training in America in a Don King gym. And I unfortunately got an illness called chronic fatigue syndrome. And that was the end of that. And my first amateur bout was Ian Napa's last amateur bout. And when Napa saw me box, he said he thought when he saw me have my first amateur bout, he thought that I had about 40 bouts. So I think there's a couple of videos of me online if you look on old videos long time ago i think smart boxing fans can see that both have elite skills yeah of course both fighters got elite skills when you start going around calling people bums what you're basically saying that the guy that you're fight the guy that's fighting the other guy is a bum well he's fighting a bum so it doesn't say much about your fighter thank you baylor for the great um discussions well yeah I, I do what i can i think if you go as well on my uh on on if you type in my name there is a video of me coaching a heavyweight um six foot six foot three six four i've never seen you from the waist down ingram lol the waist down it's a bit because i know what you're about core two nine two nine seven one um I, I can take that as more of a compliment and not that you're searching for anything else but um any footage of your about you no i haven't none it's a shame my gym was 
down in Brighton. I was in Hove actually. My gym was well, not actually Hawks. It was my gym was actually a gym. Ronnie Davis and my and my trainer when I was an amateur were both the same. Uh, one day I'm going to talk about my amateur career. I will talk about it at length for what it's worth, and I'm going to talk about the shit that happens in amateur boxing and how I was offered a pro contract with Roddy Rush, Steve Robinson's trainer, what they were kind of trying to do with me. Um, so we'll do it one day. Um, Spilka was giving Wilder some trouble. Go back and look at my prediction video for Spilka versus Wilder. Um, I've never seen you. Okay. Uh, if Bebo wins, damn, this channel one explode on Saturday. <laughs> It's about time we had an explosion, don't you think? It's about time. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let's be fair. BWTM Sports, when it was Bayloric TV, it exploded and it went worldwide globally. If you don't believe me, check out the video Bayloric TV goes global and you look at the amount of newspapers that picked up our interview with Peter Fury. Unbelievable. It was in every newspaper from the Sun to the Mirror to the Telegraph to the Daily Mail. Unbelievable. So I was quite happy. Uh, no, no, same as news readers. You never see the bottom half. Well, OK, then uh, maybe uh, maybe you're not on Twitter. You'll see me bo the bottom half of me. Um, It grates me. It grates me on when keyboard warriors call those bombs. We actually step through the ropes. Such so cowards. I know. I know. I am. I I was boxing at St. Paul's in Hull. Used to spar with Luke Campbell when I first moved there. Many moons ago, though. Yeah, well, exactly. So if you've boxed before, then I've got the greatest respect for you because you understand the pain. When I was training in Cardiff, it was it was awful, absolutely awful. My trainer was my trainer is what you call. I hate to say the word a complete. I and forgive me for saying this. A complete and utter bastard. I've never known if if you want to look in the diction of word of the name of a name of a bastard of a trainer. That guy was it. He was an absolute sour faced. Oh my God. I'm going to do a video on it one day. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a video on one day. So remember, remember we had Tyson Fury when he was world champion. So we've had Tyson Fury when he was world champion. We had Crawford before he became world champion. We had Thurman before he became world champion. But that was on the other channel, to be fair. That's on the other channel. This is our second channel. You know, um, so don't remember, this is our second channel. We have another channel that's got two, two, I think two or two and a half thousand views. So check the other channel out. Um, it's, um, I only boxed the boy who thief my, you know, what smoke. <laughs> You're funny. Uh, what was worth harder, sparring or road work? Road um, sparring. Well, no. No, bastard. Road work. Well, sparring. Road work was difficult because Ronnie, we'd get in the car. I'd finish work, get about two hours sleep, and then I have to get round to Ronnie's for four in the morning. No, four four thirty in the morning. This was when I was in Wales, and we'd walk run down the valley. So we we run down into this sort of like it's a place in Ely, it's in Cardiff, and we'd walk down this this is just long lane uh, early in the morning no nothing nobody was down that lane right and Roddy would come behind me and have his car and his car would be right on my heel so I said you can't outrun a car so he'd make sure he makes you run and it, the sort of a sort of bar my training was he made you run do you run and it, like I didn't know anything about the, the Welsh mountains so what this guy did made me run 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 and I thought I ended a run and then he made me run he said like run to the top of the hill so what do you mean? I started to run, and when he made me run, he made me swirl round and round and round and round till I got to the top of the hill. When I got to the top of the hill, my legs had gone. There was no oxygen. He said, now nah, calm down. Legs were absolutely gone. And then that evening, we had to do sparring. A horrible, horrible. And then you're there, and your trainer's digging at you and telling you you should keep your hands up. And it's all for, you. it's all for your purpose, you know? And you get hit with body shots. You get hit with head shots. You just don't want to be there. But you still got to look good and show you're improving. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible, 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 horrible. And then 
you know, c contrasting training in the States, training in Miami, Florida. Um, at that time, Randa Bailey was in the gym. Um, and my first sparring session out there with a Mexican guy. And, you know, in, in, in the UK, it was different. You know, you, you load your shoves up, you throw your right hand. And you, you know, you normally hit your right hand. You know that you see an effect. The guy might blink or you might stop. This guy hit with a right hand and walked straight through me. I was flipping out. I've never had experience that in my life. So that was a different situation. And I never had a trainer call numbers in a corner. So I'm doing what I normally do. And this guy calls a combination. I throw a jab. He finds himself one way. And, and then next minute, I look for the, I look for him. I've got to look for put the jab. He, he's, on the up, he's, he's on the other side of me. He's throwing a left hook. Absolutely amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. Um, fact, you know, um, and he called me London. And, you know, getting up in the morning and training on the beach in Miami was absolutely amazing. You know, you're hitting the pads, your muscles are burning you, you're running on the sand. I'm telling you, the feeling of of doing pad work in the sand with this Miami Beach sun coming up in the morning, it is absolutely sunset. It's absolutely, it's amazing. You should try it, absolutely amazing. Um, have you ever considered having a go at managing, promoting a fighter, Ingram? Um, I am considering something. With a lot of boxing on free TV, you, would you fancy trying that David Hay? Like, no, it was nothing like the David Hay lifestyle. Nothing like that. And you want to know how powerful Don King is? I met this Don King once. Once. I did the aura of the man. I was in the gym. And I was just finishing my sparring session. And I heard one word. I heard one word. King is on his way. I didn't realize that the gym I was in was bloody done, owned by Don King. So he went, King's on his way. All I heard is King is here. And all I just start seeing is people moving out the gym, just moving out the gym, coming out the gym, coming out the gym. It was unbelievable, um, unbelievable experience. Um, right, so Bermain Savern says we will have him in two hours' time. So we're looking at maybe 11, 10, 9, 10, 11, 11, 11, 11, 30. 11, 11, 30, we'll have the main in the room live and exclusive. So what was I saying about Don King? Yeah. And King turned up. He turned up in this limousine, had two American flags. The limousine looked presidential. And uh, I remember the gym. It was in Miami. I think it was 41st Street. I can't remember. It was 41st Street. I always remember finding, looking for three different 41st Street and found it. And I remember, always remember the, um, it, was like a, it, it looked like a garage. You just lifted the garage top up and it was quite a big gym. Um, amazing experience. King is on his way. I will look for Elvis. Uh, Don King is a mutant. Seen more eras in boxing than anyone, barring Bob Arum. Yeah, go one though that man. And they seem to you seem to wheel him out all the time. People say to me, "Oh, Don King's not very well at the moment. That's why you don't see much of him." He seemed pretty damn well to me. He didn't look like he aged. Um, I've been knocked down in sparring. No shame in that. Any kind of combat sparring was test your character. Well, that, I was. I've never that never. I never did get knocked down. I remember two times I got clipped and I got hurt. The first time was the, the flying punch, Prince Nazim. This is why you don't try and be something that you're not. I would say I was a box counter puncher, boxer puncher. I was a boxer puncher. And I remember a situation, I was boxing at welterweight. I, I well, like Walter. I remember a situation where I was sparring a guy. I normally spar, move around, it was all right, yeah. And I thought, this today I'm going to try a ting. I'm going to try a ting with this guy. So try to leap in punch, you know, like Naz used to leap in when he finished you off. He'd, 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 land, a, he'd, he'd land a big right, he'd jump into you. So I thought, I'm going to try it down in Hove. Oh my, I can still hear the punch today in my ears, right? Well, I leapt. Well, I, I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I tried to be Naz, innit? So I saw it opening like Naz did. Well, I'm not Naz. So I went to do a leap. And as I leapt, I leapt. <laughs> I leapt. And of course, not enough. He waited until I landed. So I was in midair with a punch. I can remember it in slow motion. I landed it. But I landed. And as soon as I landed, because I had no defense, I'd landed. He just went straight right hand, straight down the pipe. Bang. Like that. 
And believe me, my ears are still ringing up to today with that punch. Uh, thanks for that autobiographical sharing. Uh, never haven't heard it before, Ingram. I've spoken about it a few times. Uh, one more thing. Would you share a bit about taking body shots? What's it like? Worse than headshots? Body shots are worse than headshots. I don't care what anybody tells me. A body shot, a headshot you can shake off, a body shot you can't shake off. When you imagine, uh, imagine having a stitch, right? Imagine having a stitch. A stitch is like a bad stitch and then try to run, all right? That is not even half of what a body when a body shot hits you you can't you gasping for breath you can't breathe you all you could be okay i tell you what a body shot is like it's like you're playing a video game percent and somebody hits you a body shot it's from 100 you go right down to zero you could be have the biggest punch you could be in the best shape of your life you could be fit and, and you get hit with that body shot plump with that body shot and everything just goes absolutely everything and if you get hit in the right spot it's not good yes some guys urinate in blood after fights yes it's true that is true um i remember one fight in particular um which i've interviewed told me that he was pissing blood for three days not nice stuff man not nice stuff i remember yeah leaving us boxing um, about having my forehead just having a big a big uh middle of my forehead just having a big nut on it because I never took shots on the chin. I used to keep my chin tucked in and I'll catch shots on the top and in them on my forehead. That's why I catch my shots. Or if I was getting caught with a shot, I was getting caught on my temple. I kept my chin in low, tucked in. Horrible experience. A horrible, horrible. Um, after 15 years being a sent from a ring and living a shit lifestyle, I recently did a charity boxing match. Three times two minute rounds. I was gassed after 40 seconds. Got through on sheer will and won. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Listen, there's a video of me about a year ago. I had an Olympic boxing coach of, in Ireland coaching me. Um, national coach was coaching me. And well, not coaching me. I went there and I just did some pad work. I hadn't done pads for years. And it was the first time I've been in the gym. And I did like a minute. I was knackered in a minute. And I just, it was, it was horrible, horrible. And then I had a, I did I tried it. It was, it's horrible. You can't do it, mate. You just, you've got to get yourself in shape. You just can't. You little keyboard warriors think, I just get in the ring and throw a punch. Well, all right, you throw your punch. You might throw 10 punches. But then you gas and that guy's fit. And then he starts to work you over. Not nice. Let's hope Wilder gets hit with a body shot out of the, yeah, one body shot, mate. I'll tell you, a body shot can cripple you. Seriously. Pretty horrible the damage they take to the kidneys, delicate organ. Yeah, it's not nice. Sport, man. So. It's not, it's great to watch. And these people think they can have a go. Go ahead and have a go. Go ahead and have a go. It's not as easy as it seems. It's a very tough sport. And I respect every fighter that goes in the ring, every single one of them. Yeah. It's not nice. Not nice. Not nice at all. And then these people have to go around to their families and their kids see them and their face is swollen and can't kiss the, the, the dad. They look at the dad and the dad's face is swollen or the mum's face looks beaten up. and Man, ain't good. Not good. Yeah, right. So Stavern's going to be back with us in two hours. I'm not going to waste any more time talking here because it's not about me. It's about a Melissa Sinfield. So I'm glad you've all tuned in. We will be back in two hours. Two hours we'll be back with Bermain Stavern, the challenger for the world heavyweight title. We'll be back with him live and exclusive on BWTM Sports. And um, yeah, and we'll see you in two and a half hours. Tell your friends, tell your, tell your mates, tell your buddies, tell everyone. The uh, man is going to be back. Uh, will be with us in two hours' time. Isn't it great that the world's media has spoken to Bermain Severn? Or not even. But, to, spoken to a fighter and we're going to get the opportunity to talk to a guy who's been fighting for fighting in front of millions saturday night that's such a great feeling it's a great feeling i love my job I, I, well, it's not a job but i love what i do i really do thank you so much so yeah i think
what, two hours from now? 11? Yeah, more or less. I'd say midnight. I'll put it for 11.30, but it could be 11.45. I'll put it 11.45. So join me back at 11.45. With the mandatory challenger. Yes, he's the mandatory. I know you don't like it. The mandatory challenger remains to learn live on BWTN Sports. Live and exclusive. And we've got loads of questions. Get your questions ready, by the way. Get your questions ready. All right. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, leave your comments as always. This is BWTN Sports. We're out of here. Take care.